Girlers, and welcome to episode 45 of Girl Talk Weekly. We're your hosts. I'm Heather. And I'm Julia, and welcome to this week's episode of Girl Talk Weekly. Girl Talk Weekly is GSSJC's YouTube and Facebook blog series created by Girl Scouts for Girl Scouts. Be sure to like, follow, and subscribe so you don't miss a thing. And if you're not a member, don't worry. This blog will give you a sneak peek into what Girl Scouting is all about. We also love to have you as our sister in Girl Scouting. I'll drop a link below so you can find more information on how you can join Girl Scouts. You know, Julia, this Thursday was a very important day for our Girl Scouts and viewers. Girl Scouts around the world each embraced the outdoors and found ways to conserve our planet together. I'm talking about Earth Day. That's right. Earth Day was this Thursday, and it's all conservation, preservation, and recycling. But how much do we really know about our planet? Well, we live on it. So hopefully a lot. You may be right, Julia, but we'll be testing our skills later with an Earth Day quiz to see just how much we know about Mother Nature and our planet. But before we get into learning more about Earth Day and what Girl Scouts are doing in our council, do we have any news updates? Just a few. The first news item is so fitting. The Girl Scouts tree promise launched earlier this year with it, Girl Scouts promised to plant honor and protect 5 million trees by 2026. Girl Scouts who participating in planting a tree also unlock exclusive access to the Girl Scout Tree Promise Patch. For more information or find out how you can log your tree planting, visit the URL in the comment section below. And lastly, Girl Scouts Summer Camp is back for 2021. Registration is now open for day camps, resident camps, and yes, virtual camp too. Be sure to check it all out in the sessions we're offering this summer and register to reserve your spot today. For more information on the sessions being offered or to register, visit the URL below. And with that, we are done for today's council updates. You were right, that was a quick news update. I know you said that we just celebrated Earth Day earlier, but this week also gave me an important week for volunteers in our council. That's right. It's Volunteer Appreciation Week. April is Volunteer Appreciation Month, and this week we've been thanking our volunteers for Volunteer Appreciation Week. This week we recognize the volunteers who dedicate their hard work and time into helping inspire girls in our mission. So, Girl Scouts and viewers, if you know a troop leader or volunteer, be sure to let them know you appreciate their hard work for Volunteer Appreciation Week. Without them, our organization wouldn't be able to do what it does so well. Reach girls far and wide and provide the Girl Scout program to every girl. That's very true. Thank you, volunteers, for everything you do. As a matter of fact, our interim CEO, Judith Batty, has a video message to thank our volunteers. Let's take a look. Hello, I'm Judith Batty, interim CEO of Girl Scouts of the USA. In honor of Volunteer Appreciation Month, I wanna say a special thank you to our wonderful volunteers. Volunteers are the backbone of our organization. You are the everyday heroes, mentors, and role models who are truly making a difference in the lives of girls, championing, encouraging, and inspiring them to be the leaders and change makers the world needs. You are the ones who make it all possible and your belief in the power of girls makes all the difference. Because of you, girls have access to life-changing experiences they can't get anywhere else. Because of you, girls build new skills and discover their passions. Because of you, girls take smart risks and learn to use their voices. And because of you, girls understand the power they have to make their communities better and the world better. I grew up in Girl Scouting, so I understand firsthand the difference volunteers make. Now, as interim CEO of Girl Scouts of the USA, I'm committed to ensuring that more girls in more communities across the country have access to the opportunities I had to flex their leadership muscles 
and gain a courage and confidence that will set them up for success in life. I look forward to collaborating with you to continue our mission and build the next generation of leaders. Because of you, we got this. Thank you. That was so well said. Yes, our volunteers truly help make this world a better place for everyone. And speaking of making world a better place, Girl Scouts from all around our council have been doing hard at working doing just that. Earlier this week, our council had some trees donated to us. We in turn distributed those trees to Girl Scouts in our council to help with the Girl Scout tree promise. Let's check out some of those photos. I just love seeing these photos, Girl Scouts planting trees and making a world a better place. What could we be better than that? If you're also getting your hands dirty and planting trees of your own or, or found other ways to celebrate Earth Day, be sure to let us know and email us your pictures to the address below. Did you also see the newest addition to the program place too? <gasps> no, I haven't. This installation just went up as a part of Girl Scout Miriam Gold's awards she's currently working towards. As part of helping uh, rise awareness about plastic pollution, Miriam created this art project that was installed at our program, uh, Girl Scout program place. It even comes with a QR code to visit her website with more information and videos. Oh my goodness, that is so cool. I have to check it out next time I'm at the program place. And in case you're finding ways to conserve materials or start a garden of your own, last week's episode, episode 44, was a perfect place to start. We took a, a look to see how you can do some spring cleaning at home and use materials you find to creating mulch for your garden or how to recycle used clothes. Now, without further ado, Julia, are you ready to test our skills about planet Earth? I'm ready, girl. Just a heads up. I might get a few wrong. <laughs> That's okay, me too. But it's not about winning. It's about learning more about the planet around us and finding ways to make sure we conserve and protect it. Great, uh, great point. I feel a lot less pressure now. Uh, let's get started. All right. Here we go. More than half of the breathable oxygen in the world comes from where? Forests, the ocean, flowering plants, or clouds? A forest. I agree. Forests. More than half of our breathable oxygen comes from the ocean, the majority oh. of which it provides by teeny plants called photoplankton. Huh. Wow. That's great to know. Good to know that. How much oxygen does an average 50 year old tree provide? Enough for one person a year, enough for four people a year, enough for eight people a year, enough for 10 people a year. I'm gonna go four people a year. I was gonna go with B too. Four uh -huh. people enough. Enough for enough. four people a year. Assuming it lives 50 years, a single tree will produce 6,000 pounds of breathable oxygen in its lifetime, enough for about four people a year. Yay! Woo! All right, around the world, how many indigenous people live in forests? One million, five million, eight million, fifty million. I would say one million. I'm gonna say five. Wow, forests are home to fifty million indigenous people around the world. More than the population of Tokyo, Mexico City, London, New York City, and Cario combined. Wow, didn't know that one. Learning something new. I know, me too. Which of these items can be compost or turn into natural fertilizer for your garden? A, aluminum, B, golf balls, golf balls C, uh, eggshells, egg D, all the above. Eggshells. Eggshells. Yay. 
Eggshells, as well as many items that is biodegradable, makes perfect compost for any garden. Plastic, styrofoam, and metals are not biodegradable and will not break down. That is correct. Go us. Woohoo! What uses the most energy in a U.S. home each year? Lighting, heating and AC, the refrigerator, or heating water? Uh, I'm going to go with B because, I mean, that electricity bill skyrockets in the summertime. I know. My dad's always yelling at me. Don't turn the AC down too much. <laughs> um, but I'm going to guess the refrigerator because it's always running. So I don't know. All right. Let's see. Ah, you were right. And my dad. <laughs> it was the most energy in U.S. homes. Well, it makes complete sense why he's so passionate about this. <laughs> Don't touch the thermostat. Don't touch it. <laughs> okay, which of these species are threatened by climate change due to pollution and deforestation? The koala, the clownfish, the arctic fox are all of the above. All the above. All the above. <laughs> oh, mm, all it's so sad. All right. What was the first mammal known to have gone extinct due to the human induced climate change? Bamble decay mammalmies, doo doo birds, eastern puma, male northern white rhino. I'm going to go with the white rhino. For some reason, I thought that was just recently. Me too. I think that was just recently, so I don't think that one's it. I'm going to go with a doo-doo bird because that looks like a bird on the picture, and I feel like it's hinting me to go <laughs> like that one. Probably the thing we've never heard of. Let's see. Oh, they're cute. Oh, they're so cute. The it's a small thing. brown rat which lived in a tinny island off the northern Australia is the first mammal known to have become extinct due to the human-induced climate change. Aww. I could cry. That thing is so cute. Mm -hmm. All right. What city appears to be the brightest from space? Tokyo, Las Vegas, New York City, or Shanghai? Tokyo. Tokyo. What? The Vegas Strip is the brightest place on Earth due to the concentration of lights on its casinos and hotels. Wow, that's amazing. I love Vegas. So this is some good news. <laughs> well, it's actually some kind of sad news because light pollution actually disrupts a lot of animals' migrating patterns. Yeah. Just, just fun fact on, on that. All right. Oh, this is good. I don't know. Let's How see. many people call planet Earth home? A, 7.3 billion. B, 9.2 billion. C, 1.1 trillion. D, 4.6 trillion. It's going to be I'm in the trillion. Go, I hope it's 9.2 billion. I hope we haven't reached trillion status. I, th I think we are in the trillion. I mean, we have billion people just in the United States. I'm going to say C. 1.1 trillion. Oh, uh -huh. there you go, Heather. More than seven trillion people call the Earth home, according to the United Nations. Good to know. Well, I wonder how many aliens <laughs> call Earth home. All right. Which country is home to the greatest biodiversity of plants and animals? Is it Costa Rica, China, Brazil, or Ecuador? If it's Costa Rica, our Girl Scouts are headed there next week. Next year. Yeah, they are. I'm going to pick I'm Costa Rica. Say, all right. I think it's Brazil because they have that, gosh, geographic, the, the river. And I don't want to guess the wrong river. <laughs> but I'm going to say Brazil. I'm going to say Brazil. Okay. Ah, you were right. And there's a river. Look at you. Brazil is estimated to host between 15 and 20% of the world's biological diversity. I think it's the Nile River. No. Mm, somebody's <laughs> probably laughing at me like, man, her geography is wrong. 
Okay, what is the official what official name did the United Nations give to April 22nd? International Planet Earth Day, Love Your Home Day, Planet Earth Appreciation Day, or International Mother Earth Day? I'm going to say A, International Planet Earth Day. Okay, I'm going to go with Planet Earth Appreciation Day. Yeah, I feel like. Oh, oh I love oh. that. Happy Mother's Day. Cute. That is cute. Cute. All right, well, that I, concludes our Oprah quiz. I really did yeah. learn a lot. Me too. <laughs> I also got a pretty clear idea of the efforts we should take in helping the planet. For example, the world's population is huge. Yes, but much smaller than you thought it was. <laughs> I was in the trillions. <laughs> we all have to look up where the Nile River is just to help us out. Yeah, um, I'm going to have to Google that. And some of these topics may seem scary to talk about, but it's important to know that nothing is going to happen to the world overnight. A lot of people think that these com these conversations we have are scary because it seems like the world is ending. But if we each do our part to protect and conserve our planet, we can make sure to help ease the effects we have on our planet. Together, as Girl Scouts, we can help make the world a better place. Well said, Heather. Thank you. And with that, Girl Scouts, we're just about done with today's episode. Be sure to tune in to next week for episode 46. And heads up, Girl Scouts, we'll be moving our Girl Talk Weekly episodes to the weekend from now on. That's right. We know life is getting back to normal slowly with schools and after school activities starting back up. Be sure to catch us on our new time on Sunday afternoons. In the meantime, be sure to like. Follow and subscribe so you don't miss an episode. I'm Heather. And I'm Julia. Yours in Girl Scouting. <laughs>